Did you know that there is a secret to painting miniatures? It is a carefully guarded secret that not many people will admit to. But not to worry, old Discourse is gonna tell you what it is. Hey everyone, my name is Discourse and here's to mediocrity. Chin chin fellow underachievers. <coughs> oh, what was I thinking? Awful. Why would I start the video like that? And I have failed at many unimportant things in life like employment and education, but also at really important things like a miniature painting. And I am reminded of this fact pretty frequently. You see, in the last couple of years, there has been a major proliferation of really good miniature painters online. And well, I'm willing to bet that just as I have experienced it, you felt the same thing. These people are better than you. And I mean, just looking at YouTube, you've got people like Dana Hoyle, you've got Brent from Goober Town Hobbies, you've got the guy from Midwinter Minis, whatever his name is, you've got Duncan Rhodes, there's many, many more. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that they have gone out of their way to make the hobby inaccessible. In fact, quite the opposite. So many people have been inspired to pick up a paintbrush by this media. We are surrounded by guides and plans and artifacts on how to paint miniatures. Want to figure out how to do some vaporwave ghosts? Dina Hiles got your back. Want to see some beginner tips on how to begin painting? Well, check out Brent at Gubertown Hobbies. Do you want to speed paint some goddamn Necrons? Well, check out that guy from Midwinter Minis. Seriously, all I ever hear, guy from Midwinter Minis. What's his name? But this is all great. I did not have this when I was young, when I was learning how to paint in 2004. All I had were the guys in the local games workshop store and one of them stole my Seraphim. And that's why my very first painted miniature looked like this. Yeah. Not exactly two thin coats. Dandy's missing an arm, but it was a sword. Thin and pants was not a thing back then, I assure you. But hey, it was painted. But compared to now, I had nothing. I was basically living in a mud hut while you kids are running around in your skyscrapers with your hoverboards. Damn kids. At least Guy isn't stealing your miniatures. And this is great. I love this fact. I love that there has been this explosion in painting. Because all I really care about is whether or not my opponent has a big massive pile of grey models or not. Yes, I am in this hobby for the games. And though many, many, many more people have now picked up paintbrushes, I'm willing to bet that many, many people are also disappointed with the results. Expert painters in this hobby can sometimes make it look a little easy. Many a times I have looked up the recipe of a paint scheme, thought this looks easy enough, just a dark color, a medium color, and a highlight color. Throw in a little bit of shade and baby, we're cooking up a stew. Four hours later, I'm walking away from my ruined model crying, tears coming out of my eyes. Because you see, I am missing an ingredient. There is a little bit of a difference between myself and a golden demon winner. And it is, well, they're much better than me. They just are. And I don't have the time, the skill, or the talent to get as good as they are. Honestly, I'm not patient enough. Whenever it comes to getting my miniatures painted, I'm very much of the Veruca Salt school of philosophy. Don't care how I want it now. And do you know what? That's fine. That's okay. Because here it is, here it is. Here's the big secret you've been waiting for. Drum roll, come on, yep, let's do this. You can be bad at painting. Wait, stay, come on, stay with me. This, this is a lot more revelatory than you think. You see, sometimes it's actually desirable to be bad at painting. Huh? Come on, uh, no, now you're intrigued. So take this to heart. You do not need to be as good as the painters on YouTube or Instagram or Reddit or whatever. You can instead be with me, down in the dirt, just churning out as many models as you need. I have embraced this attitude since lockdown and it has been very liberating, I assure you. So if you haven't tried this, if you haven't just embraced mediocrity, try it out. It is, unsurprisingly, pretty easy. So here it is. Here is Discourse's Guide to Painting Badly and Doing Okay. Alright, TM. Firstly, limit your paints. Why do you need so many? What are you gonna do? Use them? 
No, no, you're about a pimping. You don't need them. I seriously find myself very rarely straying from the CM6 or seven or so pants. Almost all of them contrast as well. So obviously you're gonna need your primary color. I don't know, are your Space Marines blue or are they green? If blue, choose Leviathan blue or Talisar blue, depending on if you wanna be bright or not, right? Just pick a primary color, right? Just pick one, blue, green, red, that, that's your choice. Oh, and avoid white and yellow. Those colors don't exist anymore as far as you're concerned, but don't worry, you can get away with just painting those things that would be yellow or white different colors. Seriously, you're bad at painting, just embrace this, okay? Things don't need to be white anymore. Paint white scars, eh, you're a successor chapter. You're the yellow scars. No wait, no, not that. The red scars, that's you. The red scars, you cool guys. Plus, you can double as Blood Angels now. And you've got a whole new supplement chapter codex you can use. I don't know, throw in a couple of bikes. I don't know how Space Marines work. You'll, you'll figure it out. So aside from that me and primary color, here is everything else you're going to need. You're gonna need snake bite leather. You're gonna need black templar. You're gonna need gorgon de fer. That's right, we're being pretty exuberant here. We're gonna need two browns. You're gonna need lead belcher. And finally, you're gonna need gulliman flesh. And finally, if you really must be excessive, pick up retributor armor. It's a gold. And that's it. That's all you need. Throw on a little bit of null oil and your entire collection of paints is finished. This is all you need now. You can now paint anything you want. You do not need to spend $200 on paints. Just buy those contrasts or pick up the speed paint equivalents, which are out now. Undercoat all your miniatures gray and you are good to go. Slap on that paint in a single layer. And this is why I opened a store and the first t-shirt that I began selling was one thick coat. It's good. That's my philosophy, it's what I believe. There's a link in the description to that store below. Sorted, that'll get you through 90% of all your painting. This incidentally is why I love the Blanchetsu style of painting. This style of painting is basically painting your models badly, the art form. When you're painting your miniatures, just barely stay within the lines. You don't even need to really try that hard. Then slap on a massive coat of non oil at the very end. This is not only very quick to paint, but you can also tell people that you painted your models badly on purpose. You see, it's a style. Yes, the skin and the armor are the same color, but it's an artistic choice. It's intended. It's Blanchitsu. And there are actual games that are coming out now that have truly embraced this style, most notably Sludge and Turnip 28. Seriously, they're all about slap on a little bit of non oil and rub on some dirt and you're good to go. Which incidentally is my motto as well. Mwah, perfecto mundo. I'm like a pig in mud with these systems. And even beyond just stylistically, you can get away with pretty bad paint jobs depending on the system that you play. In fact, it is the hidden benefit to the army level game. Your paint jobs can be terrible. It doesn't really matter because the individual models don't really count. Army level games exist as a spectacle of many parts to form a cohesive whole. Most people aren't able to just soak in the details of each individual model. It's like a carpet. You know? No one cares if every single thread is perfectly the same color. And hell, to be honest, in terms of your time allocation, you're better off just looking to make all the models cohesive anyway. I painted 2,000 points, in fact a little bit over 2,000 points, of Battle Sisters all in a single night. And that was a, that, that was a, that was a soul draining experience. But I walked away from it with a pretty okay looking army. And all that was, was a little bit of dry brushing that a chimpanzee could do, seriously. Because that is my level of skill when it comes to painting. I am the proverbial monkey trying to type in some Shakespeare into a typewriter. And I documented that all on the channel. So, you know, subscribe to the channel if you ever want to see something stupid like that again. Now, importantly with this video, I'm not arguing that you should just turn into a factory line here. I'm not expecting anyone to paint 382 Imperial Guardsmen by tomorrow. That would be crazy. It couldn't be done. Or could it? No, 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 I hated that video. It was awful to me. But rather, I'm saying to perhaps reevaluate your goals and maintain a little bit of perspective here. Speed painting can take the fun out of the act of painting your miniatures, but equally so can stress and out about all little details. And here's the thing, here is another little bonus secret for you. 
Nobody cares about your miniatures. Truly, I assure you, unless you are a golden demon level painter, no one cares how good you are at painting. Unless, of course, you're painting for a commission, in which case the buyer is probably gonna have some opinions on it. So, you know, try a little bit harder, I guess, if you're getting paid money. But generally speaking, if you put up photographs of your miniatures online, other people are gonna spend exactly 30 seconds looking at them and then moving on. No one cares about how well your miniatures are painted as much as you will care. So, you know, enjoy the likes when they come or don't enjoy the ones that don't come. Just, you know, acknowledge that it's kind of meaningless. And more about people's general inability to truly care about the care and attention that has gone in to the painting of a miniature. Another aspect of today's modern life is that we are constantly bombarded by images of absolutely beautiful miniatures. Seriously, 24-7, go on the Warhammer subreddit and you will find the top upvoted posts are all nothing but painted miniatures. They're absolutely everywhere and obviously it makes sense. People are proud of the time and effort and skill that has gone in to painting their miniatures. And good, I'm glad, I'm happy for them. Not jealous, happy. Not envious, happy. But all they get from me is an upvote and then I move on. I don't really think about them anymore unless they are spectacularly amazing. There's a few miniatures like that. And just quick aside, but that's why I like miniature painters with a style as well, who haven't just followed the box art. Those are the ones that tend to stick in my mind the most. Like seriously, you can't just be technically good anymore. Everybody is technically good these days, it seems. And so if you're the average painter, what hope do your average models have when smacked up against all these golden demon level paint jobs? Well, Oh, don't sweat it. Just have fun with it. We're constantly getting exposed to the best looking miniatures that have ever been painted in the world. The cream very much rises to the top on social media. It's just the cream sometimes is poisonous. It's very much the fashion model industry here, right? We only ever get lambasted by pictures of beautiful miniatures. Then we look at ours on the shelf and think, I should have married your sister. Again, why would I do this to myself? And if your goal is to churn out a golden demon level miniature, obviously this video isn't for you. You've got dreams, you've got hope, you've got ambitions. Get out of here, what are you doing? No, stop, come here, <laughs> please, please stay. And besides, how many people are actually hoping to achieve that standard of painting? See, I think it's important that we understand why we're painting miniatures and interrogate our intentions. We must have a little bit of intentionality here. For me, for example, I don't like to paint as a purely artistic endeavor. It's why I'm doing a video right now on painting badly. I need to understand why my models need to be painted and I need a date. So I take shortcuts. I don't paint neatly. I don't worry if my paint spills over a little or, or a lot. I keep an eye on ignorable details on a miniature and well, ignore them. So I don't paint every belt buckle or every piece of cloth. And God, Games Workshop models are the worst for this. There's always so much unnecessary extra details. Just ignore all those. Straps and buckles and things, come on. We're trying to run a miniature show here, not a whorehouse. Who designed these things, Rob Layfield? Well, no, because they have normal feet or feet of any kind. And I abuse the absolute shit out of Noel Noel as well. It adds so much depth to a miniature and it really makes colors pop at a glance because that's all you're painting for, a glance. All I want my miniatures to look good in is when they're slammed on the table. So think about why you're painting your miniatures and whether or not you really need to chase the standards that other people have set for themselves. Now I'm not saying there is no value in taking your time while painting. I acknowledge that really focusing, really mindfully painting can be incredibly therapeutic. Just spending lots of time on a single model to get every detail just right. It can feel good, you know? Especially if you're talented or, or well-practiced. Not so much if you're me. I roll out of this four hour paint session with a halfway serviceable model. One that looks okay, but not much better than if I had just rushed it with some contrast paints. And if that's the case, I just want the model looking okay. So consider it, that is all I ask. Consider just 
painting badly. Embrace it. Join my side. You would have not a dark lord, but a queen. A queen of the trash. Join me, my stick of the dumps. Join me and embrace utter mediocrity. <laughs> Seriously, you might be surprised with the results. In fact, you might find that by releasing yourself of the pressure to paint well, that you end up painting a lot more and a lot better. And no, this is not some elaborate plan to get everyone else painting worse so that I, in contrast, look better. That would be quite the scheme. And I'm not up to schemes at all. I never have been. Where are those free space marines? God damn it. Oh, 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 and bonus secret that no one ever tells you. When you're painting faces, just scream loudly with great fear and terror. And seriously, the model will come out looking amazing. Every single time I've painted my best faces, it's while I've been screaming loudly, understanding exactly how well I am painting in that moment. And it's important that you get the genuine terror in your voice. It's important that you understand that a single wrong move will spell disaster then you'll find you get the perfect faces every time. Eyes and everything. So thanks for joining me today in the dump. A big thank you to my patrons who support the channel. You can see them on your screen now. Why not check it out at patreon.com slash discourse miniatures. And an extra special shout out to my Space Marine captains, Stephen Jackson and Earth Wormia. Thank you so much for your generous support. And I'll catch y'all next time. Bye bye Games Workshop, Delenda Est.